So you mentioned this before, but I'll just reiterate. We um, so we met. I think it was last summer. Um, which is when I was first getting introduced to the regenerative movement. For those who don't know what regenerative agriculture is, people are, I think, more familiar with the term sustainability. Um, how would you explain regenerative agriculture? Uh, and how does, how does Doris Dairy try to be as regenerative as possible? Was it, did you always start out like that or did you transition? Explain it to me like I'm five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I think I came back to it uh, slightly by accident, I suppose. Um, the regenerative approach. Yeah. Um, I had a field that just wasn't wasn't producing, and I was putting fertilizer on it, and it wouldn't produce. When you say producing, you mean like the grass? grass isn't yeah, well. grass is yeah. the only crop I, I grow, and it was just like it was just sterile, it was dead, yeah. and which couldn't feed your cows. Yes, right? it was effectively a field that was just costing me money. Mm. It wasn't producing, and it was a. We bought the field twenty five years ago, something like that, and. I, I remember I was 15, 16, and we, that's longer than that, wasn't it? Damn. And um, the first year we had it, it grew that much grass, we thought we'd got the golden goose. And the, the grass growth was, it, the first crop we had off that field, I wouldn't have got anywhere near that um, a few years ago. So the first crop, I, I, well, the first crop we had about 110 bales off seven acres. So this is a small field. I mean, it's right. not. This, this, so for those who are listening that are not necessarily farmers, it's a lot. Yes. Yeah. So a normal field, you'd get 70 bales, about 10, 10 bales to the acre. Okay. So it's just like, wow, this field is incredible. Right. And then, so we had four cuts off it that year, mm -hmm. and it went from 110 to, I don't know, it was 70, 40, and then maybe 20. So I wasn't even getting 70 bales off this field. And then it was getting down and down and down. So I, you know, it was about 30, 40 bales. It was just, so I looked into it and it didn't matter how much inorganic fertilizer I put on. Inorganic. Inorganic. So like, you know, yeah, prills, so, yeah. yeah, so manufacture thing. It just wouldn't grow. And it's because I'd stripped it. I mm. literally stripped the guts out of this field over the course of a few years. And then I realized I oh, we need to put some organic matter back in. And that was the key to realizing that we need to find a way of restoring it, at least, you know, at least putting back in. Yeah. So we would class that ground as hungry ground. So I mean, you put manure on it, cow manure, and it just eats it and it just disappears. Okay. I put 160 tons of compost on that field and it didn't even look like you'd even been out there. It, okay. was, it, was, it was just so hungry so we are putting different grasses now onto that field so i'm not expecting to get lots of growth i'm expecting the the so i'm using a lot more clovers to actually put like natural nitrogen back into the into the soil and and then that when you start going down the wormhole of well the whole the whole food thing just leads you into regenerative regenerative the, the the wormhole and so so what we're trying to do here now is as well as farming sympathetically with the animals, we're trying to farm sympathetically with the, with the earth as well. So we haven't used fertilizers for, I don't know, 10 years, artificial fertilizers. We've, um, we do some balancing so the minerals are out, uh, phosphorus or something like that, we'll, 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 we'll put that right, because obviously that's, that's important, but we're just trying now to build soil. Right. And that's, if, you wanna, if you're that's a five-year-old, five-year-old, Building soil is what I would yeah. say the regenerative is trying to do. So instead of depleting, we're trying to maintain and build, which is really difficult to do. Mm. But mob grazing is one of those one of those ways that you can you can actually add organic matter to the soil. It, it's, it's it's a very slow process. But so that that's essentially what regenerative agriculture tries to do is understanding that cycle mm. that if your earth isn't healthy and all the biodiversity that's in that then your grass is not going to grow or, you know, whatever else should be growing out of it. So you don't have food for the animals. The animals can't be healthy. Um, so obviously making sure that you're working with this cycle, this natural cycle and not against it mm -hmm. is, is the whole principle. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, what would, 
so I guess it was a bit of a, a transition in a way. Mm, it was, and, yeah. Yeah, it was. Accident. Well, we've been taught, you know, get as much milk out of the cows, treat them with antibiotics if they right. get ill, fertilizer, spray, kill everything you don't want. We're actually, we're killing all the stuff that we actually need to make it healthy. And as an industry, we're, we're led by governments and, 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 and science that, you know, you need all this really nice, rich rye grass because you get all the bulk and all the sugars in it. But actually the soil is not doing the soil any good at all. Mm. And then you've got to spray it off and glyphosate and all. The whole, the whole, the whole thing is not in sympathy I mean, I had, you know, I've replanted lays. I don't, I don't spray them off. I just turn them over and, well, I should turn the top over just so I get a seed bed. So I'm not ripping them up completely because that's the best way to lose carbon is for the atmosphere, which is to start plowing and right. turning over ground. Which is a, another key component of regenerative practices is to basically regenerate, put the health back into whatever ecosystem you're mm -hmm. managing um, so that it would become a, a carbon sink, yes. carbon sequester mm -hmm. carbon, which mm -hmm. is the big problem today. Yep. Um, so farmers like you are really are really trying to do that. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm brilliant at it. We're learning all the time and sometimes the processes or the practices you need to do are, are hard to get your head around when you've been doing something for so long before. Right. Uh, and like leaving grass in a field is like, <sighs> But there's still grass in there. The cows could eat it. But knowing that it it actually regenerates much quicker if you if you leave a a, a good base, mm -hmm. that's a hard one to get your head around because you're so used to like strip strip feeding right down to the soil, not down to the soil, but by, by an inch, and then moving them on again. Um, that's a hard one. That's a hard one to get your head around. I think that's something that Gabe Brown and mm -hmm. uh, from Dirt to Soil uh, explains really well when he's starting to sort of question the farming practices that he was accustomed to that mm -hmm. they teach in school um and it's that well why are we why are we doing it this way it's yeah. just i don't know just because i think the best thing it's always he, been done like that the best thing he says is don't be tempted by the plow but sell it hmm. if you sell the plow you can't use it and you find another way of doing it but no i mean his his his, his approach is incredible so there's never bare soil the amount he can produce on a, on, a, on an acre hmm would make most arable farmers envious yeah. because he's got a, he's got, always got a crop growing underneath or the crop that's growing underneath is designed to feed the next next crop or feed the soil every single decision he makes is about the soil health and you see it like i mean we all feel it when we were walking through i don't think i i think that we can trust our instincts even if we're not necessarily in the industry we were you took us around your fields it's lush you're seeing flowers grow everywhere you you can tell that it's a healthy field mm -hmm. even if you don't really know why mm -hmm. um sure hearing the birds chirp the bees all that that's great um mm -hmm. so for let's say just from your personal experience and obviously it's tried and tested and some things work and you do have to make things that work for you to a certain extent what are some of the tips that you would suggest or advice that you would give to farmers that might be interested in trying a few regenerative techniques um, and that are like new to this what would you read read lots of books there's lots of stuff on youtube read dirt to soil that's it they just read that book alone isn't, isn't there follow some of the i mean there are lots of grazers on on youtube that just show you what they do um greg judy for one um, there's, there, there is lots of information out there now on how, how to do it successfully. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I follow all of them, <laughs> or, or, or many of them, but it's um, the information is there to yeah. do. And don't be scared of it. It's not like a woohoo, mm -hmm. you don't need to wear a hippie scarf to, to do it. You know, yeah, it can, it can, you can integrate it one way or another.